It is Christmas Day, Friday the 25th of December 2020. Good morning everyone. Uh, happy Christmas to you all and welcome to our Christmas Day internet service. We meet in uh, more limited circumstances and because of the coronavirus pandemic there's no physical service here. I hope that you uh, share with us and enjoy joining with us in our internet service today. Let me just briefly remind you of one or two announcements. There will be no Sunday school this Sunday, but there will be children's church and we will meet for physical worship, therefore, this Sunday, the 27th of December at 11.30 a.m. because the churches um, are allowed to remain open for public worship. Then in the evening, we shall have the Zoom service at 6.30 p.m. Boys and girls who normally uh, join us at the physical uh, Christmas Day service and who normally show their toys at the Christmas Day service, uh, obviously you cannot do that this year. So if the parents can join us at the Zoom service on Sunday evening, then the children can show their toys on the screen for me and for everyone else to see. Could I remind all of you again of both the United Appeal and the Moderator's Appeal for countries devastated by the coronavirus pandemic? So, I hope that all of you have as good and as happy a Christmas as is possible for you in the more limited circumstances that we face at the present time. But if we remind ourselves of the reason for the season, namely that we celebrate the birth of the Lord Jesus, then that will bring to us our chief joy and our highest happiness. So let us join together now in the worship of Almighty God, giving thanks to him for the gift of the Saviour. The prophet Isaiah, anticipating the coming of the Messiah, said this, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government there shall be no end. So we worship God together. We join in our opening praise, O come, all ye faithful, which will be led by Sarah and her dad, Alan.
him in prayer. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, on this happy Christmas day, it is our privilege and our pleasure to add our songs of praise to those of the angelic host who first welcomed the Messiah so long ago, and to say with them, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Lord, it is also our privilege, like the shepherds of so long ago, to say one to another, Let us go even now unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord has made known unto us. So may we, like those shepherds, encourage one another, urge one another on in the faith, and may we travel in our thoughts to the feet of the Redeemer and heal him as our shepherd king. Almighty God, we are told also of the wise men who came and presented unto him their gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. So may those of us who claim to know Christ and to love him, may we too come and lay at his feet our gifts, our talents, our strength and energy and all that we have and all that we are, that Christ by his Spirit may use us and work in us and through us as he desires. And so we pray, O God, that in our internet service today, you would speak to us. Speak to us as we hear and sing these familiar Christmas carols. Speak to us as we listen to the reading of your word. Speak to us also through the preaching of the gospel message. And as Christ was born in a manger so long ago, may he, as it were, be born again within our hearts. So hear us, because we pray in his dear name. Amen. Now our scripture reading today is found in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2, reading verses 1 to 12, and it will be read for us by Kayla Kajugu. Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. The Magi visit the Messiah. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all of Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them, where the Messiah was to be born, in Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied. For this is what the prophet ha has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed, on coming to the house they saw the child with his mother mary and they bowed down and worshipped him then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold frankincense and myrrh and having been warned in a dream not to go back to herod they returned to their country by another route thank you very much kayla and may god add his blessing to this reading from his precious word. Now at this point in a normal Christmas Day service, I would invite the boys and girls to come up to the front and to show me their toys. 
and I usually display how out of touch I am with all the latest toys uh, that the boys and girls have got. But obviously, um, since um, uh, we're not having a physical service, that's not possible today. However, let me just remind all the boys and girls again, if you can persuade your mums and dads to join us at the Zoom service on Sunday evening, 27th of December, you can um, let us all see the toys and the gifts that you got during that service. Now, over the past two Sundays, we have been thinking about people who had to leave home on that very first Christmas. Jesus had to leave his home in heaven and come down to earth to save us. Mary and Joseph had to leave their home in Nazareth and travel to Bethlehem to register, and there Jesus was born. The shepherds, they had to leave their familiar workplace in the fields, and they had to hurry down to the little town of Bethlehem to see the infant Messiah. So lots of people had to leave home. And the people were thinking about on this Christmas morning who had to leave home were the wise men or the magi. They had to make a long, long journey from where they lived in the east, probably in what was known as Persia at that time, and is probably where I, the country of Iran is today. And they probably had to travel about a thousand miles to see Jesus. And they didn't have planes, and they didn't have trains, and they didn't have cars, and they didn't have a sat-nav. But they followed the light that they were given. They followed the light of a bright, single, spectacular star in the sky. And they also followed the guidance given in the scriptures. And following that light, they came to where Jesus was. And there, we're told, they bowed down and they worshipped him. And they presented to him their gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. So boys and girls and mums and dads, you and I need to do just as those wise men did so long ago. Follow the light that God gives us, especially in his word, the Bible, and come to Jesus and give our hearts and our lives and our love to him and serve him all our days. So I hope that's what you boys and girls and mums and dads and all the adults, that's what I hope you'll do on this Christmas day, and in a sense, every day. Now we're going to look at a little video clip of uh, this story that we've been thinking about today. men weren't at home for the first Christmas. They were following a star, traveling far away from their home, looking for a newborn king. They wanted to worship him and give him gifts. The Bible tells us, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. And then later in the story, when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. So, Although the wise men weren't at home, they were still able to worship and praise Jesus. Now, 
how we sing a hymn that reminds us of all the people who came to see Jesus on that first Christmas day. We sing together, come and join the celebration. It's a very special day. Christmas Day, we think, of course, not only of the gift that God gave to us, but we uh, think and consider other people and their needs as well. So, uh, Amy Kajugu is now going to lead us in our prayers for others, our prayers of intercession. Amy. Let's pray. Dear Lord, on this Christmas morning, we pray for everyone around the world celebrating this special day. Help everyone to remember the true meaning of Christmas. Thank you for Jesus' birth and that we can rejoice with you on this happy day. Help us to enjoy time with family, exchanging gifts and having fun together. As we receive gifts, help us to remember that you sent us the greatest gift of all, your son, Jesus. For those who can't meet in person, we pray that they can still connect with their families through video or phone calls. We pray for people who are sick. Please be with them and their families and help them to feel your comfort and love. Thank you for all the care workers who are working today and caring for the sick. We pray that you will bless them and keep them safe during these difficult times. We think of those who have lost loved ones and find today very difficult. We pray that you will be with them and surround them with your love. We remember people in need who cannot afford to give presents or enjoy a nice meal together. Thank you for charities that provide for those in poverty and help make this day special for them. We pray that people give generously to these organizations to help people in need. Thank you, Lord, for always being with us. Help us to feel your presence as we enjoy this wonderful day. In your name we pray, amen. Thank you very much indeed, Amy. Now, as Christmas approaches each year, the toy industry goes into overdrive and into overtime. And the pundits predict which toys will be the best sellers. Uh, according to Argos, uh, this year among the best sellers is the Lego Technique Lamborghini and the little live Gotta Go Flamingo and the designer friend Cece doll. 
but the gifts that the wise men brought to the baby Jesus remain the same. And what strange gifts, in a way, they were. Not a rattly or a cuddly toy or a little baby grew or a wee Christmas jumper. No, rather gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And what is the significance of those three gifts? Well, first of all, gold for a king. Gold for a king. The most precious metal in the world was and is gold. And so we are reminded that God gave that which was most precious, that which was most valuable to him, his only child, his only begotten son. That son was and is king, king of the universe, king of the Jews, king and head of the church. But tell me on this Christmas morning, have you acknowledged him as your king? Has there been a coronation in your heart? Can you look back to a time when Jesus Christ took his rightful place upon the throne of your heart and in your life? And if he already has, then what about the ongoing obedience that such a king deserves? Born a king on Bethlehem Plain, gold I bring to crown him again. King forever, ceasing never over us all to reign. Gold for a king. Secondly, frankincense for God. Frankincense for God. Frankincense was used in, in Old Testament times along with the burnt offering. It was a powdery kind of a substance which was set alight. And as the smoke rose up and the smell ascended, it symbolized the prayers of the priest and of God's people rising up to God. So this incense represents man's inner thoughts and emotions and the worship that should rise up this day and every day from our hearts to Almighty God. And those wise men, as they bowed before Jesus, they were simply saying, in a sense, to him, all that is within us bows before you. All that is within us worships you. They didn't tickle the baby under his chin, nor even cradle him in their arms. Rather, they fell on their faces before him and worshipped him. But why worship an infant? Now, of course, um, little babies very often are the center of attention in any home and in any family. People are just inexorably drawn towards them. That is a very natural thing. But these particular wise men actually worshipped this child. Why? Well, because of who he was. As the prophet Isaiah predicted of him, he would be the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. He had to be God in order to save us because only God can save us. But he also had to be human to identify with us and to die for us. And that's why we are here today, to worship him. Frankincense, for Jesus have I, God on earth, yet priest on high, prayer and praising all men raising, worship is earth's reply. Frankincense for God. And thirdly, myrrh for his death. Myrrh was a bitter spice used for embalming the dead. And that reminds us that Jesus would one day 
die for our sins. Every other baby was born to live, but this one was specifically born to die. And there are various hints about this in the early parts of the Gospels. Joseph, for example, was told, you will call him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And every devout Jew knew that salvation from sin involved the shedding of blood. For example, the writer to the Hebrews in chapter 9, verse 22 says, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. The myrrh, therefore, which the wise men brought to Jesus prefigured the sacrificial atoning death that he would die, the Lamb of God, giving himself for people like you and me. And of course, after the crucifixion of Jesus, Nicodemus brought a mixture of aloes and myrrh to anoint the body of Jesus. Myrrh is mine. Its bitter perfume tells of his death and Calvary's gloom, sorrowing, sighing, bleeding, dying, sealed in a cold stone tomb. But that death that he died was on our behalf. He died that we might live. He laid down his life that we might rise up to eternal life, that we might know God here on earth, enjoy him on earth, and enjoy him forever. God did not use a silvery box or paper green and red. God laid his Christmas gift to me within a manger bed. There was no evergreen to which his precious gift was tied. Upon a bare tree on a hill, his gift was hung and died. So, we see wise men bringing gold, acknowledging Christ as king. They bring frankincense, acknowledging him as God. They bring myrrh, acknowledging him as savior. What will you do? this Christmas day. Are you a wise man, a wise woman, a wise boy or a girl? You will do as they did. You'll follow the light that God gives to you. You'll come to him. You'll bow down before him and worship him. And you'll lay at his feet your life and your love and your treasures. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness Bow down before him, his glory proclaim with gold of obedience and incense of lowliness. Kneel and adore him. The Lord is his name. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts on this Christmas morning. And our closing praise picks up on that theme we've been thinking about in the message today, we three kings of Orient are bearing gifts. We travel afar. Star with 
beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Glorious Lamb, behold him again, King and God, God and sacrificed, heaven sings out joy of the angels, the excitement of the shepherds, and the wisdom of the magi lead us this day to the feet of the Redeemer, and may we find all our Christmas peace and eternal blessings in him. Amen. <laughs>